everybody, welcome. Glad you guys can make it this afternoon. And some of you may have already heard, we are actually broadcasting or we're Zooming live from the Lighthouse for the Blind. So I have with me my uh, co-host, if you will, uh, Sean. Is Sean you there? I am. Yep, there is Sean. We're actually in the uh, Assistive Technology Evaluation Center. Uh, this is a large room about the size of, I want to say about three two-car garages. We're all in separate corners of the room, but uh, yes. all this, social is our, this is our broadcast center. It's our broadcast center. <laughs> the Lighthouse Broadcast Center. Yes. And so today we're going to be talking about some things related to technology, uh, namely re uh, recorders. And uh, my goal is to show you some recorders. We're not going to get too in depth about each one, just enough for you to get an idea of how they work, what the pros and cons of each one are, how they can be helpful. Uh, before I do that, Sean, we have any announcements this week? I actually already did that. You um, already did that. Well, yeah, maybe. that was the, the filler while you were out. Okay. Well, I, at the risk of being captain redundant, I will ask you to ask you to do that again. Um, so today, this is what we're going to talk about recorders, and some of you out there may already have uh, some recorders that you use. So the, the challenge with a lot of folks who are blind or visually impaired is you can't write things down, right? That's a, that's a challenge, at least some of us can. not And even those of you who can write, maybe writing can be a bit of a challenge. It could be kind of time consuming to get out a 2020 pen and get some paper with some large lines on it and go through that. So I find sometimes recording things um, on the fly can help capture some information that you could then listen to later and uh, respond to it that way. So I'm going to show you some recorders here in no particular order. Let's see, what should I start off with first here, Sean? How about the, how about the Olympus recorder? There you go. That was the yeah, first the recorder. This is, this is an oldie but a goodie. And this one here, it's probably seen some better days. That was the uh, first recorder I was introduced to when I came to Lighthouse. I remember you had, um, that was your recorder of choice. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to go over some features here first. Um, so can you, can you, everybody see those of you who can, who can see? I'm adjusting your camera. Adjusting my camera. Okay. Technical adjustments here, folks. Am I good? Okay. All right. So, <laughs> my my coworkers here are making sure that I'm within the frame of the camera. Uh, all right. So I have here a Olympus recorder, and this one's pretty versatile. I I use it quite a lot for reasons I'll get into in a moment. I don't know specifically how much time can be recorded onto this, but I know it's it's substantial. Uh, now, one thing to note about this recorder is that it has a screen, a very small screen with a digital uh, display. And uh, it's not large print, it's not low vision friendly. So that might be a con to some folks, but what is a positive is with this particular recorder that um, it makes beeps, and those beeps and those sounds can kind of cue you in as to what's going on with the with the recorder when you're when you're using it. So, for example, I've got uh, two buttons here that are across from each other. I think that one down off there. Uh, there's a bump. There's a uh, there is a button here. This is the, let's see, this is not on, but help with this. All right, did everybody hear that beep? Okay, so that beep is, uh, your, that, that indicates your stop button. So when you're playing something, you can hit this button to stop it while it's playing back. Pause it, in other words. All right, right across from that is a button that is your record. 
So if you were holding this in your hand, it would be to the right of that button. And you click it once and it beeps once. It's a very quiet beep, but it beeped once. Now, whatever I'm saying right now is being recorded, okay? And if I click it again, it's gonna re uh, beep twice. So it beeped twice. And that double beep lets me know that now I'm now no longer recording. And now here right below that is a circular pad. It's uh, basically a directional pad. It's similar to how some TV remotes are set up. You have a directional pad, you click up or down to change the volume, for example, or the channel. And in the middle, there's a button and that button is play. So if I click that, it'll play back immediately what I just, what I just recorded while I was speaking. I don't know that that's very audible, but it did play back what I was recording. All right. Now, I have it played back on a um, setting where it speaks much faster than what I recorded originally. That's just my preference because I like to get to the information and get through it quickly. And now below that here, I'll tell you what probably the coolest feature of this recorder is, is that it's got a folder system. It's got a folder system. It's got uh, basically four folders that you can record things into. And it's right here kind of at the bottom left, right there. Um, if this directional pad were clock, it would be around the seven o'clock position, okay? So if I click that, it beeps once for folder one, beeps twice for folder two, beeps three times for folder three, and beeps four times for folder four. Now that's helpful because you can assign different folders for different uh, different categories. So maybe there's a folder, uh, folder one, which I just clicked on again, toggle back to it. That could be for my groceries. Okay, grocery list or list in general. And then folder two could be phone numbers. Folder three could be appointments I have coming up. Folder four could be some other miscellaneous, okay? Some other miscellaneous appointment that I'm gonna re record or category. Now, I'll tell you, probably one that's a disadvantage with this particular recorder is that it's very difficult to erase for some people because the erase button is very small, it's very tiny. In fact, it's right there below the, the pause button. It's like a slight raised button. And um, so different than some people, it's difficult to, to feel that button and then to um, er erase files with it. So that's just a few things about the Olympus. Uh, there's more to be said. I'm sure, but um, this is one that I go to a lot because I just like the folders and I like uh, being able to separate things. But how about you, Sean? You have any particular recorder that, that you like or, or that you used to use? Well, um, I have a Wilson recorder, and I know you're going to talk about that next. Um, the uh, one of the recorders I've used for a very long time is the Victor Reader Stream, and that's more kind of a that's a higher end recorder than what you're showing. But um, hey, that's maybe something to think about covering in the future. Oh, very good, yeah, absolutely. So Wilson recorders, I do have a couple of those here. I have a couple of those here with me. You know, it'd be funny if, if Wilson, if uh, the Wilson recorder can make a, can make a, a volleyball shaped recorder I wonder who, who, who Mr. Wilson is, or maybe it's a Miss Wilson. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So what I have here is a version of the Wilson. Uh, it's a kind of a uh, compact version. It's uh, about the size of a credit card, maybe lengthwise, widthwise, a little thicker than a credit card, of course. Uh, it's compact. And with this particular model, I believe it can hold up to four gigs of recordings. So a lot of space dedicated to, to recording. 
uh, to capturing information. Uh, there are a few buttons on here. Let me start with the power button. I'm going to click it on. So I made a double beep, and that beep was nice and loud. So that double beep means that the recorder is on. Okay. If I click it up again, if I flick it up the, the switch over here on the top left corner, it turns it off. Flicking it down, turns it on. It has um, essentially five buttons. Starting from left to right, we've got our delete. The button in the middle is play slash pause, and the button on the far right is record. The button below that is our memory button, and then the button to the left, right of that is our is our volume button. Okay. Now let's go back to the memory button here for a second. This is a cool feature on this one. Uh, it will actually speak aloud the number of recordings that you have on one recorder. Okay. Uh, so this one has zero, has zero messages. So in other words, there's no recordings on this. But if I were to make a recording, then it would, it would say something different. So I'm going to make one right now. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to find the record button. I'm going to click it. There we go. All right. So recording one, take one. Double beep means that I press the play button in the middle and that stops the recording. All right. And I'm going to go down here to my memory button. See how many messages I have. One message. I have one message. If I want to play that message, I click on the play button again. There we go. All right. So recording one, take one. Listen to myself talk. <laughs> All right, so there is a couple of features here. Um, also, there are um, there's the volume button here. You click it, and the pitch changes in um, in the volume. It's louder in pitch each time I click it, and then it toggles down to lower pitch. So you can just adjust the volume by clicking one button. Okay. All right, let's make another recording. I'm gonna make one more recording. There we go. Recording two, take two. All right, do one more. Recording three, take three. Go down here to our message or memory button. Three message. Have three messages. Now, if I wanted to get to one, like let's say message number three, I could click that message button, hold it down, and what it will do, it will do is count off. One, two, three. Recording three, take three. All right. Or if I want to go to recording two, I click that same button down. Three, 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 message. Two. All right. Uh, what do you think about this one, Sean? I've always liked the um, kind of the ease of use and how the buttons are kind of laid out in that um, you know three across the top and two in the bottom. Yeah. I know that they've there's been a couple of revisions on that player, so it certainly has been. Yeah. This one, I would say a disadvantage is that these buttons are not very big and they're not very sensitive. You had yeah. to kind of put a little pressure down on them to get them to, uh, to respond because they're, they're not very sensitive. Um, they are so small too, it'd be really hard to put a bump dot on there as well. So maybe one of those, those small dots that are for keyboards, maybe, maybe that would help. But um, the other advantage of this one is that it is chargeable. You can plug on, uh, there's a USB included that you can plug into like a, like a socket or an iPhone plug or into your computer and it would charge off that. So those are just a few features of that, of that version of the Wilson. So I'm going to turn that off, put that aside. Any questions so far?
do you guys have any favorite recording recording devices bob <laughs> you don't want to single anybody out here no bob. i'm sure bob probably used some recorders over the years or others out, others of you out there who maybe been at this for a little bit longer than other people uh, i don't know if you ever saw this kevin but aph used to have a uh, talking book player and it was really um it was had a lot of metal on it and it was really heavy duty yeah um, those were one of the really good they were the old tape players but you could play talking book you could play what used to be recording for the blind mm -hmm. uh, rfp books on on there but that was a real quality nice tape player and recorder back I know in when I started out years ago with the state of texas uh, when I was opening up a case, they had given me a uh, tape player. Uh, it was a re tape recorder tape slash tape player, high quality for, uh, for for tape players and all. I, it was a big upgrade for me because before then I was just using Betamax and 8-track. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I'm enjoying my Plex Talk uh, pocket daisy recorder. Oh, nice. Yeah, Plex Talk came out. Um, that's right. That well, it was somebody else's device, and then I think Freedom took it. Freedom Scientific took that, didn't they? Yeah, it was uh, Chicano Kimchi, and Freedom Scientific took it. And uh, oh well, Independent Living Aids has it now for three hundred fifty nine dollars. That's uh, that's one of the two big drawbacks is the price. Uh, the other is that when you want to make a recording, it takes a whole minute to get the thing ready to record. Wow. Uh, you know, unless you have it in power safe and are pretty sure it's not going to come on in your pocket. Uh, There's another recorder out there I've seen lately. A lot of people talking about. It's called the MicroSpeak. Oh uh, yes, uh, sold by a company uh, AT guys. I'm sure. I was hoping to have had one with me today, but I don't have any in my inventory at the moment. But yeah, that certainly has uh, has its advantages. It also has some quirks. There's a little bit of a delay when you click some of the buttons. They don't immediately uh, record you know, there might be like a three second delay from when you click the record button to when it beeps um uh, if i had that in hand i would uh show that to you but it also it, it, it is designed to be very low vision friendly it's got big buttons color contrast as well and also it speaks it has a speech output and a, and a user manual that's pretty nice it's pretty sweet all right yeah. so i have here another recorder this is another Hold version on. kevin Those one second questions. we still have another hand up oh i'm sorry go ahead Ahead, Kevin, I was just wondering how, how much are those recorders? Oh, good question. Excellent question. Um, well, the Olympus recorder that I showed a moment ago, you can get this at Walmart. I've seen it at Walmart for uh, for under thirty. The okay. original original one that I showed you that had the folders, and the beeping effects on there. I I found these at Walmart over the years. Okay. Uh, the Wilson recorders, I would average, I would estimate them probably around $30, between a $30 and $20 price range. If you shop around online, you can find them around that price range. Um, and we'll probably include in the wrap up email links to where you can find those things as well. Um, okay. We'll that out towards the end of the week, and we'll be sure to have some links in there where you can find it um, as, as well. Good, good question, though. Very good question. Okay, we have one more hand up. Okay. Yes, um, I wanted to comment a little bit on the on the micro speak and also on the Olympus um, recorders. Mm -hmm. I have had Olympus recorders over many many years now, and I am a big fan of those. Um, and the prices have definitely gotten better over the years on those recorders. And I, I think overall they're very blind friendly. Mm -hmm. Uh, the comment I wanted to make on the micro speak was I actually used that recorder for 
a little while, but it had a, a deal breaker for me. I'll tell you about it. I do agree the buttons are big on it. It would be very blind friendly. But the delay when you push the button is awful. In yeah. other words, what I'm getting at is, say you were on a phone conversation and needed to make a note during this conversation of something. Basically, and as you guys know with the Olympus, you can pretty much, even from uh, boot up, you can be recording in just a matter of, of just you know, three or four seconds, five yes. seconds. Right. But this right. micro speak recorder, the biggest rub about it was, I mean, it took a while. You would push the record button and you could go out of the room and get a drink and practically come <laughs> back and you would right. still be waiting for it to go to record. Absolutely. So right. that uh, what I used to get me, on the uh, micro speak is I would click the record button and I would think I didn't do it correctly. And so I would end up clicking it again. And yeah. then that caused a whole new set of problems. Um, and then, yeah, then, then you'd have to start over because it, yeah. it would be another delay. So yeah, that was, I yeah. quit using that recorder just for that reason, because that was for any business dealings or, or anything important. That was just a deal breaker for me. So anyway, that was my That's comment on that. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. If they could just take the, the Olympus and the micro speaking and combine them <laughs> so that it had the, the quickness of the Olympus, that would be a, a good, a good partnership. Um, other thing to note about the micro speak is I mentioned earlier, it does have a user manual. It's very thorough. However, um, it is possible to accidentally delete that user manual off of the device. All, you know, entirely. You, you would think it would be one of those things where you couldn't delete it, but you can. So just be aware that you have one, if you receive one, if I train somebody on one, it, that is a possibility because I have been in situations where I've been teaching somebody and and I've accidentally deleted, <laughs> deleted the user manual right off the recorder. <laughs> so it's not, not good. Um, I, I learned that on the fly. So. Um, Take it for what you will. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So let's go on to the, another version of the Wilson recorder here. Okay. So this is a Wilson recorder. It's another version. It's larger than the other one. The other one was kind of a more of a keychain kind of pocket version. And this version of the Wilson is um, larger. It's got bigger buttons on it. First of all, that's an advantage. Right up here at the very top of it, there's a set of three buttons. And there's two buttons over here on the side. Uh, they are larger again, a little bit more sensitive. And just like with the other Wilson, you can flick it on and it beeps, beeps twice when you switch it to the uh, on mode. It takes two AAA batteries. I have the case off for those of you who may be able to see what I'm doing. I have the case off, two AAA batteries. Um, and some of the features are similar to the other device. I'll go over those briefly. Um, I believe. Yep. All right. So starting from left to right, the is record, middle is play, and the last button is, I believe, stop. But uh, no, it is delete. Excuse me. Yep. So again, from left to right, record, play, delete, record, play, delete. Over here on the other side on the right side are two buttons. That button I'm clicking right there on top is the volume button. Notice how the pitch changes. The button below that. Two message. I have two messages on here already that I've recorded. But uh, I will make one more recording on here. So let's make a recording, shall we? All right, so I clicked the record button. There's a beep. Okay, recording three, take three. I click the button in the middle, the play button to stop. Beeps twice to, to let you know that you've stopped recording. Now, if I come over here to my memory button. Three, message. I just like with the prior recorder, if I click and hold it down. One, two, three. And so I clicked the record button, there's a beep. All right, so again, if I want to get to a specific recording, 
I can click and hold this down and it will, uh, when I hear the number of the recording that I made, I can release the button and it'll play that button back in, in its entirety if, if you want. I also, I found that with this recorder, I, I believe it holds up to 12 hours of recordings. So you could get a lot of mileage out of a, a recorder such as this. Uh, the only thing about this one that's a little difficult for some people is when you're going to delete a, a file, you have to first find the delete button, which is the button over here on the on the far right on top as it's facing you. Um, and while the while I find I find it's easier to do that while it's playing back a message. Take three. So I'm going to click the delete button twice. So it's like a double click. Um, and it's an, it's a little difficult for people to have the dexterity to complete that, that specific kind of movement to get it to delete. That's what I found it's challenging with this one. But other than that, I, it's a great recorder. It's compact, it's uh, sturdy, it's got big buttons, and um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quality recorder and it has accessible features on it as well. All right, any questions about that? Comments? Anybody, anybody out there have a Wilson recorder that they They've, they've used in the past or currently using now? We have a couple of hands up. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, a while ago, I mentioned some uh, drawbacks to the Plex Talk, and I'd like to balance that with a couple of highlights, reasons I really like it. One is that it makes it can make very high quality recordings. I've used it to transcribe my prized vinyl records into digital form. And also, uh, it is completely accessible. Everything in that is accessible, including an audible level indicator. If you choose to turn off the automatic level control for recording and set the level yourself, it tells you whether it's too low or too mm -hmm. high or good. So those are two strong points for the thing. Nice, nice. Bob, I imagine you must just have a whole whole room full of gadgets at home. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Zoom recorders were popular too. Uh, they're not an accessible per se recorder, but uh, I know a lot of the podcasters, uh, I don't know, Bob, if you ever listened to Blind Bargains, that podcast, Joe Steinkamp and JJ, JJ Medoff. But they really rave about those those Zoom recorders. Uh, no, I didn't hear that. I don't know about the Zoom recorders. I I did meet uh, Joe Steinkamp at uh, uh, the Chris Cole Center. He's a wonderful guy. Oh yeah, he is. <laughs> well, you check out Blind Bargains. They have a podcast, and uh, Joe and uh, JJ and some other folks do that one. That's a really good tech podcast. All right. Yeah, we have another, another hand raised, Rebecca. We do. One second. All right. Go ahead, Don. Don. Hey, Don. You there, buddy? Just a reminder for those of you out there, if you'd like to raise your hand, it's if you're on the computer, it's Alt Y on the phone, it's star nine. And if you want to unmute yourself, I believe it's Alt A on the keyboard. And star, star six. Star six on the phone. Sometimes okay. you have to unmute from your side. I'm here. There you go, Don. Um hi Charlie, I was muted and <laughs> couldn't get myself unmuted there. Mm -hmm. Um Anyway, just to kind of, I don't think you heard any of it, what I said. I said, um, I also have the Zoom recorder. And there's a couple of things I like about that recorder. One of them, the audio quality is excellent for recording more musical type things, a concert, something like that. Uh, that's one of the real pluses. And the size also of that recorder is uh, great. 
but the real downfall about the recorder is, and um, I do have some uh, low vision. And even for me, it, it's tough though to use it. It's just not blind friendly at all. Um, but if you can get around some of the drawbacks like that, which I can get around some of them, when you uh, can make it work, it's great, great recorder. So uh, second thing I'm curious about, let's talk a little bit, bit about the delay in the Wilson recorders. Uh, how does it compare with the Olympus would be the first question. And then the second question would be, can you give the price of the Wilson, uh, the larger recorder? Certainly, certainly I can give you an idea. Uh, the price would be, the last I had looked, it was around 40. Okay. So we'll, we'll make sure to include that in our wrap up and we can have links to those items. Um, okay. In our, in our email that we send out later in the week. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I really feel that probably of the of the of the ones that I've shown thus far, the Olympus is the quickest on the fly. You pointed that out earlier. You get it out, you click on the power button, and then you click the record, and it it's immediate. It's it's almost instant. How quickly it, you know it will start recording. And now, I will share with you that it's something that I'm. <laughs> I've done, I think we've all been here is, um, before is when the Olympus, sometimes you get kind of busy and you forget to turn the power off when you put it back in your pocket. And so you have the power on in your pocket and you accidentally click the record button. So you end up with like two and a half, three hours of just of shuffling sounds as you walk around with it in your pocket half the day. So certainly yep. be, <laughs> to be mindful of, uh, I, that's just my, it's my experience so yeah uh, mm -hmm. also just to comment on, on the olymp that's the one thing the one drawback you kind of found about mine and it's older to be fair but the battery life especially if i don't turn it off after i use it if i just put it in sleep mode uh, it, it really got it really can eat up some batteries um fairly quickly yeah that's a good point that's a good point Thank you. Any other comments or hand, hands raised, Rebecca? Yes, we have a couple more. Go ahead, Alice. Alice? You probably need to unmute your side, Alice. Star six on the phone, or it's Alt A on the computer. Alice, can you hear him? Hello. There, there you are. are. We got you. Um, my question is, I have a little different problem. All these recorders are small. Yes. Need larger buttons. Uh, is there a, a like the size of a of, of I guess a, a small iPhone or something? Is there yeah. a recorder like that? Right, there there are. Um, we've mentioned earlier the micro speak recorder, which I don't have one with me at the moment, but I would say out of all those that I've discussed today, it is, uh, the buttons are the, are, are the largest and they're also color contrasted, so they pop really well. It's good for low vision uh, folks. Uh, the only thing about it is it's got a little bit of a delay with uh, when you click on the button, uh, we discussed that. Uh, but if you know that going in, well, you know, it can be a good recorder. Just you have to kind of just deal with some of the quirks of it. But uh, so, yes, and, and I'm sure there are other ones that I'm not aware of that do have larger buttons on them. Okay. That's, the, that's, the that's one of the problems I had with that one of yours, mm -hmm. and it was mainly the buttons I couldn't because of my hands, I couldn't hit the right. I, I feel like, was it an Olympus? I may have given you one of the Olympus in the past. I, I seem to recall that being true. Um, yeah, 
that, yeah, that's another disadvantage with uh, the Olympus is that they have small buttons. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, that's maybe a con. When I went to hit the one button, I hit the other button too. Yeah. I can't and the, the erase button is uh, especially difficult because it's very, very small. Um, and I wish they would make that bigger. So. And I know quite a few people have arthritis too. Yeah. They get over and, and that would make it very difficult. And I used uh, what I was in trouble with when I called in was my daughter put one on my phone mm -hmm. and it picked up the emergency stuff and I may have hit something but I wasn't in it. And yeah. it picked up the emergency stuff here on the Wi Fi from the hotel, from the uh, apartment house. And I had to get it off. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, so it and uh, I don't think that's going to work out. I'm going to have to find one that's that's. Well, at some point, I I hope to have a microspeak here in the office, probably, and when things are uh, changed and we're able to perhaps. Uh, meet with one on one, then maybe they'll have an opportunity to, to show it to you. You can kind of make up your mind about if you think it would be helpful or not. Okay, thank you. We have another hand raised, Rebecca. We do. Go ahead, Liz. Hello, Liz. Okay, hi. First, I want to make an FYI comment. Some of us might be calling on like um, an iPad, like me. Huh? And sure. you, you, I had to figure out the instructions because nobody ever said how you raise your hand or, and then the screen pops up where you have to like unmute yourself now with that newest update. So it's a little confusing and I'm a little slow on sometimes finding where on the screen I'm supposed to go. But my actual comment is uh, when I first went through way back when DARS DBS, I was given the Olympus, was it VN 3100? And I'm mm -hmm. guessing that that's like really, really old because it was like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's solid silver and all the buttons are silver. So right. I might need some help learning how, because nobody taught me. They just said here. Uh, one thing I've done over the years is a lot of people that I work with have problems with the Olympus and feeling those buttons. Is I, I put bump dots on them. I put bump, ah. small bump dots on the pause, the record button, and other buttons, and I put different sizes and textures of them to make those buttons kind of pop out more at you. Because otherwise, yeah, uh, they are flat. So um, maybe at some point I can put some, I can put some bumps on there on that recorder to make those buttons uh, easier to locate and identify. They'd have to be really tiny buttons. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I have, bump I have, dots. Yeah. In fact, I have some on this recorder that I was showing earlier. I, they were kind of take, coming off because um, they were a little bit older. But yeah, that's that's been doing that for a number of years now because you know, it's a, the buttons are flat. <laughs> so right. it, it's kind of persnickety that way. And the one that you showed, the voice recorder that you showed that had delete as the first button, I think that's dangerous because that I would the first button I would feel for would be the one mm -hmm. on the, the top left and right. if I accidentally it, with, pressed it sure well with respect to the Wilson you have to double click it oh okay if you click it once it won't delete okay because uh, I thought I kept thinking to myself that doesn't seem very safe because yeah. that's the first button I would push and would I delete everything right. no if you if you clicked it once you wouldn't delete it um, you have to like very deliberately click it twice, like a like a really ah. beat almost. And um, for some people, it's a little difficult because uh, you have to almost kind of keep your finger pushed down on it while you click it. Uh, but once it's one of those things that once you get the once somebody gets the motion, you know they they get it. But it it can be a little a little persnickety. So. It just sounds backwards to me to have the delete first. <laughs> I mean, it also depends on how you hold it too. You know, I mean, you you, know, you could change how you hold it, and that would change how the orientation of those buttons would be. Um, 
you know, just all I would say is make sure when you hold it that the that the microphone part of it and then the grill is facing you, but there's no there's no uh, hard rule about you know you have to hold it this way, you know. But, uh, but uh, yeah, good good points. Okay, that's all I had, and somehow I'll figure out this. Cause I was working at the time and didn't right. actually ever figure out how to use this and thing. You still have you still have that recorder, correct? Yeah, you're that right. Yes, okay. I got it. The instructions, this baggy full of black cords. I don't know. <laughs> Well, maybe one of these these days here in the future, we can take a closer look at that, help you with that. Okay. Cool. Okay. Now, thank any you. Other, any other any questions? Okay. okay, I got a I got a tip, um, just as a recommendation for a recording program for the iOS devices, uh -huh. iPhone or iPad. And this is an app I've used for a long time. I've used it so long that it changed names. <laughs> so uh, if you have Dropbox, which uh, Dropbox is like a cloud sharing, file sharing um, app, you can back up your files and save files up in the cloud. Um, you can have it on PC, Mac, iOS, or Android. So you can have it on any platform. Um, well, the app was originally called Dropbox. Vox, drop V O X, and they've since changed it to Rec Up R E C U P. And what's really cool is you can uh, you can go into the settings in the app and have it start recording on launch. So you just once you open the app, it starts recording, and then once you hit stop, it uploads that file to Dropbox. So you know, you want to quickly take down a phone number, you want to record a lecture, um, you know, whatever it is you want to record. I've recorded concerts with it before. So, um, you know, once you hit stop, it uploads it and boom, you have it on all your other devices. If you have a computer or an iPad, boom, it's all right there. So that's one of my favorite apps that I use quite a bit. Yeah, awesome. And uh, speaking of apps, now on the phone, as Sean's mentioned, there's actually a uh, app that comes standard with with your phone iOS device. Put on my speech so it's intelligible. <laughs> percent communication communication heading app switcher voice memos voice memos, so voice voice memos, memos. is an app that's coming standard on the iphone you don't have to download it it's already there and it's a recorder essentially on your phone voice memos heading record button the button to record is at the very kind of towards the bottom bottom left or right corner what would you say sean bottom right corner record yeah record can I double tap on that, make a recording. Recording one, take one, a lighthouse for the blind. Stop button. And it even has, says stop on the button as it's recording, so I'll double tap on that. I believe you can also, once you're in there, if you do the two finger double tap, uh -huh. you can use that to start and stop recording as well. Oh. Voice memos. And that two finger double tap just has so many, uh, Application doesn't it, Sean? That's right. And when you uh, stop the recording, search S Adams Street text field. It actually one fifty six p.m. It will give you a kind of a a title for the recording based on where you were on the location where you recorded it at. S Adams Street text field. So it says Adams Street, which is where I'm at right now. So that's kind of an interesting feature. You can change the. Uh, the name. One fifth duration. Track position. Duration. Ten seconds. Tells you how long the recording is. Track position. More actions. Rewind. Play. Button. Play it there as you swipe right and left. Fast forward. Delete. Button. Wood way DR. Or you delete. can delete it. Button. Double tap on that if you wanted to get rid of it. Fast forward. Play. Rewind. Fifth voice memo. Vo voice memo. As Adam Street. So that's one option on the phone. 
Um, certainly there's a little bit more to it than that, but uh, that's one, one way of doing it. Um, and that's kind of our goal here is to kind of show you in a number of different ways. That way you've got a lot of you know, tools in your toolbox to choose from, not just one particular way. Also, let me show you with you guys some, just some real practical stuff we're recording. You know, recording um, can be great for, let's say, if you're, you know, if you got to go to the grocery store, you need to make a grocery list. You could, re you know, record that grocery list at home, take the recorder with you, and then have it on your person to listen to uh, while you're going through the store with somebody or by yourself. Um, also, um, but one thing I've always liked about the recording is, I don't know, some of you out there, you, have you ever been on the phone with somebody and they, they tell you, oh, I, um, so let, let me give you this phone number to call. This is a very important number. Can, can you write this number down? And you may be thinking or saying, uh, no, I can't write. I'm, I'm, I'm visually impaired or, or I'm blind. How am I going to write this number down? Am I, I going to have to memorize it and keep it in my head for later? But if you have a recorder on you, what you can do is, uh, while that person is speaking to you, you could record the, that part of the conversation. So, you know, I might be on the phone with Sean, and uh, uh, Sean, I'm going to put you on the spot. We're going to do a, going to do an impromptu uh, role play here. All right. So Sean's on the phone with me. Sean, uh, you said you have a phone number for me, Sean. Uh, yeah, I got a number for you. It's eight one seven. Eight one seven. Eight four four. Eight four four. Four 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 four. Four 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 four. Thank you. That's a very unusual voice. It sounded a lot like Hank Hill to me. It did. It, it sounded. It was eerie, eerie. How it was like he was in the room with me or something. It's crazy. So yes, with um, <laughs> with that, uh, Sean got me on that. I'm trying not to try to keep a straight face here. Thing is, Sean, I'm trying. I'm trying to give it an, an air, of, an air of professionalism here, and you're you're making that very hard to do. <laughs> All right. So, if I wanted to play this back, I would uh, play, hit the play button. Eight one seven. So, as I'm reading the number back, you know, I can pause it in between each set of numbers. So, eight one seven, as I'm dialing it, perhaps. Eight four four. 844, right? And then continue. Four, 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 four. <laughs> All the four, phone four. we have here, guys. 4444. Four, four, four. Uh, uh, is, is, is that a real number, Sean, or did, did you just make yeah, that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, especially if you're, a, um, you're from Dallas, Fort Worth. That is the old time and temperature number. Dallas uh -huh. number. I'll tell you what time it is and what the current temperature is. Now that does that does that still work, Sean? Oh yeah, yeah. It's been yeah. around since I was very young. Like, well, that's been a long time ago for you. It, it has. <laughs> <laughs> too too long. Oh, we're terrible to each other on this. I swear. All right. Any other questions or comments? Minus minus Hank Hill. No no one named <laughs> Hank Hill is allowed to call. Or, or Wendy has her hand up. All right, Randy, what's your, what's your question? Hello? Hi, Randy. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you hear us? Oh, okay. Yeah, you were saying I could download an app. You could download an app. You could also... You could also just use the app that comes standard on the phone, which is voice memo. Okay, okay. And that's the way to record with an app on the phone. And that is saved onto the phone or backed up into the cloud as well. And, um, you know, there, that's an option, a digital option. Most of the options I'm showing today are handheld. Uh, phys they're physical. They're nice. But my phone is always saying you don't have enough space. So oh, uh -oh. you to uh, you to your manage your storage in your in your settings on your phone to see if there's you got a lot of music downloaded. Nah. <laughs> I do. Photos, oh. photos will take up a lot of memory and music. Yeah. Photos, music, and videos. That's what'll take up space. 
So you may oh, have, okay. So I guess you have I, to go uh, go under and do some spring cleaning with your phone and get rid of some of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because mostly I can just tell her what to play because I got the Apple Music. So I okay, yeah. I'll just do that. Okay. Okay. So music. music see, my, uh, I don't know. My phone. My phone is linked to my iPad. So. If I didn't do that, then I would have more space on my iPad. No, there's well, there's separate devices. So if you if you run out of space on your phone, doesn't it doesn't mean you're out of space on your iPad? Um, okay. It, it's yeah. Because when my phone is ringing, my iPad is ringing as well. So I yes. Like, I yeah. So that's a that's a feature of the iOS, uh, the operating system. It basically makes it where if your uh, your iPhone is near your iPad, both of them will ring, and you can answer you could answer your iPad and talk on it if you wanted. So okay, okay. So yeah, well then that's what I'll do. I'll just clear my music because it's like, do I have to buy something else? Then I don't want to do that. So clear my music. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Any other hands raised, Rebecca? No, let me check the chat. Oh, let's put the number for the temperature in the chat. 817-844-6611. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, it's eight. And then really, you could do 844 Five 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 five, or yeah, it's always that's a that number's been around a long time. You have to give it a try, Kevin. Maybe I will after this. So I have one last item to talk about, and that item is the pen friend. The pen friend two. I'm sure some of you may be familiar with the pen friend already. Some of you may not be. So. Well, let's give you kind of the long and short of it. The, the pen friend is a, it's a voice labeling system. It's a, it's a recorder that you can use to record onto stickers and on stickers and and buttons that can be at, you know placed on a particular items like prescriptions or containers or CDs and many many other applications for them but um, and then you when you uh, touch the recorder to the sticker or the button it plays back the recorded message that you put on there via the wand which I'm going to demo here in a second uh, and it's again it's pretty versatile Sean do you have one of these or at home did you use one of these before oh yeah um, it's used it on spices at home and uh I see Mindy used them on flashcards to study, study for her massage therapy exam. So yeah, the pen friend can be quite useful. Yeah. Uh, she actually had instructors that would record. I mean, you can record a long time on those stickers. Yes, you can. I think there's an hour of recording per sticker. Right. It comes with like a hundred stickers or something to that, around that number. Uh, so you get a lot of, a lot of bang for your buck. Speaking of, of which uh, just the price for this, if you're wondering, is about a 125, 130 on average. Okay, so that's um, certainly it's a little bit more expensive than your average recorder. Now, you can use this as a way of re you can use this as a recorder. You can record your voice onto these uh, tabs or onto these stickers, and then play back what you know. What, whatever it is, the message that you had uh, that you wanted to, to listen to again. Or you know, you could use it as an identification tool. I use it mostly as an identification tool um, at home. I, um, you know, it, but each person's, you know, different or individual. But it's, what's cool about it is that it gives you a lot of options. You got a lot of versatility in how you apply it. Um, for example, at home, I've got bump dots on my range um, for my, uh, my oven. Um, but uh, what I've done is I put a pen friend tag above each button for the most part and I recorded onto it what that button 
what that bump dot means. So I'll get a, a tag that says, you know, uh, bake and a, a tag that says start. Just so that, if, you know, if I have a moment where I'm like, hmm, what, did I, what, what was that again? I, you know, I forgot what that, what that bump means. I can re touch the pin friend one to the sticker and hear the message played back to me. All right, so I'm going to turn this on. Now, let me orient you guys to this just briefly here. Uh, it looks like a kind of a giant pen, hence the name pen friend. Uh, you can kind of hold it like a pen if you wanted, perhaps. I don't know how. I was going to, I got to hold it so that I'm, as if I'm using it as a pointer, I'm pointing it at somebody. I'm pointing it at Sean right now. Um, I like a laser pointer. A laser pointer. Yes, thank you, Sean. A laser pointer. All right. If I wanted to turn this on, there's a button here at the very uh, base of it, at the widest part of the of the pen, of the wand. I click it. There's a beep. That beep indicates that it's now on. If I um, click the button again, help click and held it down, we'll turn it off. And there's a chime there, and that chime means that um, that chime means that it's now off. By the way, this has a, uh, a 10 minute battery con conservation mode where uh, if you have it on and you don't touch it or use it for 10 minutes, it turns itself off automatically. Okay. So I'm going to turn it back on, click the button down here. Also, those of you may be able to see there's, uh, there is a light on this as well. Uh, the light indicates the power is on, okay? Um, so above the power button is the record button. If you might want to make a recording, you click and hold the button down, which I'll do right now. While clicking and hold, holding on the button, you touch the wand to a, a tab or a sticker. Recording one, take one, the pen friend two. Then I'll click the record button again. Click it once like you're clicking on a remote on a television remote. Then I'm going to touch it back to the tab. Recording one, take one, pen friend two. Okay. Now you may be asking yourself, can I record over the recording I just made? Do I just get one shot with this? The answer is no. Or yes, you can. You can record over it as many times as you want. So I can do another recording if I wanted to. Okay. Recording two, take two, Lighthouse for the Blind. Okay. And if I so chose, I could make a longer recording. I could record someone giving me instructions on something. You know, it holds up to about an hour's worth of recording. Okay. Uh, it has a couple of other buttons above that one. I believe is the volume. Let me see if I'm correct in that though. If I click that button right there above the record button, it's a toggle for the volume. And then finally, the button above that is the mode button. Welcome to Penfront. The mode button puts it into different uh, modes or features. I believe you can use this as a MP3 player. You can get download books onto the, on the pen friend and uh, listen to books. If you wanted to. Uh, I've never done that before. Had John, have you ever done that? Have you ever used this as a book player before? I don't know think I don't know that I ever have or that I ever would, but it's a nice feature to know that it's there. It's also got a USB port, I believe, there on the side. It comes with a, with a USB drive or USB cord. Um, you can plug it into your computer and um, you can back up your your pen friend tags onto your computer so you can use them uh, a different time for different items as well pen friend takes a couple of AAA batteries which come included which is nice 
a little persnickety getting it out the battering casing off the back. Which you're hearing me right now have a time with, but you click the battery casing off the back and takes two AAA batteries. Put that back on. The other feature that's nice with the pen friend is it comes with a help uh, help feet uh, mode. There's actually a booklet you can use, which I have here. This booklet has round circles on it, set up in a way it's kind of similar to the pen friend device itself. If I touch the wand to these individual circles, it will give me different directions on how to use the pen friend. It makes a liar out of me here. So is that not true? I'll reboot that one more time and see if it will come on. Okay, here we go. It gives you a little suggestions about how to use the pen friend. So you can put this on freezer items in your in your refrigerator to know what the foods are. Because when something is frozen, it's very hard to tell what it is uh, by touch. Keep track of all your appointments. Put a label on your calendar or in your diary and record the details to Interesting. Record a letter for someone else to type for you. So you can take one of these labels and put it onto your calendar and then record onto that sticker or that tab what what's happening on that on that day on your calendar by touching the pen friend wand to the tab. So that's just a few of the highlights of the pen friend. There's certainly a little bit more to it than that, but I just certainly you know I just want to give you guys kind of a, a rundown of what some of the uh, features that are available on some of the recorders that are out there. But uh, any questions about any of that so far? Questions, comments? I wonder if one of you guys out there has a pen friend. Maybe there are some creative ways that you've used to use it as a recorder. Let's see. Liz has her hand up. Okay. Go ahead, Liz. Okay, the unmute box popped up again. Um, besides the pen friend, are there other uh, recording devices with tabs that yeah. you can choose from too? Yes, there is a Ryzen uh, voice recorder, very similar to the pen friend. It has, it has tags, tags, tabs stickers uh, similar setup I, i've only handled it once or twice but i will say it, it has larger buttons if i'm not mistaken compared to the pen friend pen friend it has it does have buttons that are large at first like the power button is fairly large compared to the other buttons and the record button is a little it's pronounced but the volume button and the mode button they're pretty small. And I've had people over the years have a hard time feeling some of the buttons on it. So uh, the Ryzen, it, it has larger buttons um, and it has very similar features. Um, set the same principle, right? You're recording on the tags and tabs and such, right? Okay, uh, those are the only two? Yeah, those are the, the two that I'm aware of. Those are the the the, probably the, the, the workhorses when it comes to the, that particular uh, area of recording. I'm sure there are others out there, but I just don't know, I'm not as familiar with them perhaps. Yeah, most people talk about the pen friend, so I was just curious, yeah. does they have any competition at all? Or is yeah, that would, the best would, out would, there? I'd say the Ryzen would be the competition. Um, and uh, I, 
you know, I will say the pen print is something that I've used personally for years. Um, I've used it with clients, uh, very versatile. Um, it's, it's one of those kind of uh, gadgets that you, you, you sit around with it and you play around with it at home and you have them, I call them light bulb moments where you just like, oh, oh, I can use it for this. And, oh, oh and, oh, and I wonder if I could use it on my spices and I can, I can use it on, you know, fill in the blank. It really, it's really a lot of fun when you start thinking about creative ways uh, that you can use it. Um, I've had people put the, the pen friend tab tags or stickers on the top of makeup uh, makeup uh, bottles. So they can just take the wand and run it over the, uh, the, 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 the bottle caps or the lids for the makeup and he hear the color, the color of the makeup you know, uh, announced out loud. Um, it's really versatile. I mean, if you went with the Ryzen, you know, you'd probably be you know, a very similar experience. I, and I, I'm not sure if anyone listening out there has, um, has a Ryzen uh, recorder, voice recorder. But it'd be interesting, inter interesting to compare, wouldn't it? Yeah. Just out of curiosity, it's mm -hmm. like that's the only one I've really heard of, and I thought, well, is that the only one that's made? Right. Uh, I'll, sh I'll share you with you one other um, application for it. We have a. Uh, some of you may know we have an RV. That's uh, basically a. It's outfitted uh, with a. Uh, a model apartment on board for somebody who's blind or low vision. And this RV, it's got a whole bunch of switches uh, for setting it up, for auto leveling it, and cooling it, generator. And so to a blind guy like me, you get in there and you're like, oh my gosh, look at all these switches. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, what, what do I do with all of them if I'm going to help set up? I don't want to start just randomly, you know, flicking buttons. <laughs> but, you know, that wouldn't be good. Uh, so what we did is we took pen print tags and we put them above certain buttons, and then we recorded onto them what that what that switch did. So that in the event that we were a little fuzzy about, hmm, what did that button do again? You know, we can, you know, take the take the wand and touch it above and the. You know where the sticker was at, and here it said something like interior lights or exterior lights or auto level um, generator uh, power button. Um, so it takes all the you know, ambiguity out of it. You know, so. so you could stop guessing at what you're doing. As, as much fun as that is, yeah, no, it's <laughs> <laughs> you know, to take, take the guesswork out of it, especially with something as uh, as as involved as a as a RV mm -hmm. setting that up. So. One of these days, cool. I will. Um, opportunity presents itself. I will. Uh, I'll demo the pen friend to you, and okay. then you get a better idea of kind of how it how it could benefit you. Cool. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Liz. All right, guys. Any other comments? Comments, questions, stories. I like stories. Any, any stories? Let's see. Bob has his hand up. And change your life. What's that? Bob has his hand up. Go Bob. ahead, Bob. In iOS, where is Voice Memo now? It used to be in the extras folder on page two of the home it's screen. It's in communication folder on my phone. Or the communication folder that's set up automatically. Um, that's where you'll probably find it at. It's not extra. Okay, uh, I didn't so, see that folder. Also, you know, if, if you're not sure if it's on your phone, what I would recommend you do is take your, your iPhone and ask Siri, open voice memo. Voice memos. And if it's if it's downloaded onto the phone, Siri will open it up, pull it up for you. That's a quick way to get to it. Okay, that didn't work either. So we it must may not be on it. No, you may have to re-download it, Bob. I thought it was built in. I thought so too, but sometimes apps can disappear. 
<laughs> okay, thank you. For strange reasons, yeah, you're welcome. Well, guys, if, if any of you out there today, you're listening and you have any questions, um, you want any more in-depth information, you can call me here at the Lighthouse. Our number here is 817-332-3341. Uh, you can call and ask for me and I'd be happy to speak to you um, at length about anything we've discussed today. Uh, any, other, any other questions or comments? So, any, any hands raised, Rebecca? Remember, if you want to raise your hand, it's Alt Y on the computer or Star 9 on the phone. Liz has her hand up. I'm sorry, Rebecca? Liz raised her hand. Go ahead, Liz. Hi. Um, about apps disappearing, I can answer that one. <laughs> okay. The, there's a setting on your phone that will anything, any apps that haven't been used in X amount of time, it will automatically mm -hmm. remove them from your device. That's true, yeah. So you're, if you haven't turned that off, anything that you've not used in, I don't know, 90 days, or I you can't remember what the setting is. Settings, and, and you go in the general, and then storage, you can go to manage my storage. And I believe there's a way that you can check that box so that it, it won't automatically store your apps um, away um, if you're not using right. it. Right, and that's, oh, I know <clears throat> that apps will disappear, so I had to go there and <clears throat> find them again. <laughs> yes, totally. Okay, that's all I had. Yes, ma'am, thank you. All right, any other? Oop, there goes the pen for it. I didn't touch it for 10 minutes. It turned off. All right, guys. Well, if nothing else, I think we're going to wrap up there today. 